The village of Darragonley nestles in typical drumland country. It is surrounded by green hills, rocky pastures, heathy mountains, bogs and rocky limestone pastures. The area is peppered with little lakes fed by streams of pure spring water. Stone Age man moved to the higher ground to worship their gods and bury their dead. The work of the early Christian stonemasons also abound in the area. There is no doubt that this scenic beauty and tranquility inspired our ancestors in their music, dancing and storytelling. An active cultured group, the Darragonley Set Dancing Club, have been researching and reviving these traditions, and it is their aim to bring the spirit of celebration and remembrance of an illustrious past. The only other difference is the second time we swing in the Christmas, there's no ladies' chain to break. You just dance back home. Break off that swing back home. Hear that? Hear that? Second Christmas, second Christmas. We're swinging here the second Christmas. The first time we were ladies' chain break, ladies' chain. Break back to the wrong Dancing was once a favourite form of entertainment and social mixing in the area, and is once again bringing a newfound enjoyment for some and happy memories for others. scenes and characters involved in the preservation of a rural lifestyle have been recorded on camera and canvas over the years by local and outside artists. And just as every picture tells a story, so every artist has a story to tell. There's something I've always come back to, no matter where I've been, you know, for periods of time, there was always that yearning to get back to this sort of landscape, you know, because I was born and reared played and fished and shooting and everything around here, you know. And if you're looking for inspiration, you couldn't get better than what we've got around here. The lakes up the mountain, Loch Navarre, down around Loch Melvin, Loch Iron, for instance. You have 75 miles of scenery there, you know. You couldn't go wrong. It's just everywhere to be a painter's paradise, really. I would have, you know, been inspired by the musicians, being a sort of 
into the music myself, well, as, I mean, as a listener, not as a player. But uh, I've always been interested in it as far as back as I can remember. And those people I admired greatly, and therefore, you know, there was something I, I wanted to sort of portray the people and the people who made the music. And, you know, it's the whole thing of listening and looking and the sort of visual and all that sort of thing. Some great characters. So you're, you know, you're always tempted to get back home and put them down on canvas. Right. Local characters, you know. Mm -hmm. Quite a few of them are musicians, storytellers and people like that, you know. And would you have got much influence from those sort of people, you know, talking about? Oh, I very much so. You know, there, there are people that are, you know, of the soil and part and parcel of the earth here, you know. And uh, it's, it's, there's no other place on earth I'd rather be or mix with any other people than the people I know. And there was someone, a lot of those guys I'm talking about are dead now, and unfortunately some of the great characters, you know. But uh, I don't know, they left me with memories, you know, I'll never forget anyway.
The physical labours of yesteryear may have been strenuous and tiring, but they held a rewarding satisfaction for the labourers as they viewed a job well done, a crop saved, a home and family provided for with fuel and food. This is a continuation of a lifestyle that worked in unison with the land and the term environmental damage had not yet entered the agricultural vocabulary. The Irish citizens and listen to my story of developments and happenings now causing great furore. They say Connacht hills and valleys and St. Patrick's holy mountain are stuffed full of golden guineas. Nearly ready for the fountain. <coughs> and the strange thing is that here and there there are a few objectors who distrust the mining companies and frown on their prospectors. They don't seem to see our problems, could all find a quick solution at the negligible cost of long-term chemical pollution. All the chosen few among us will be rich as our looking Midas. And the modest price we'll all pay is some cyanide inside us. <laughs> The improvement in our diet will make everyone a glutton with the subtle taste of arsenic of <laughs> Connemara mutton. <laughs> Them big company directors will give ministers a handshake and they'll set the wheels in motion to transform the barren landscape. And the local men will be employed on JCB and Dumper, but they'll carry off the profits to Hong Kong and Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> oh, they'll rip the landscape inside out and give the place a new look. And them tourist types will come no more to Lewisburg and the Duloc. And, 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 and there's no way you can stop it cause they wanna and they're gonna and by God they'll leave their trademark on the hills around Cornamona. And the eerie peace and quiet will at last thank God be shattered. <laughs> when the dynamite's exploded and the rocks are crushed and battered. And the toxic waste washed off the earth will cause efficient slaughter of the old rainbow trout and salmon that infect our inland water. We'll be modernized and civilized, the whole Lord, it makes me chuckle. We'll repudiate our past and we'll forget the old couple of When the new golden God makes each one a true believer, then we'll soon see the last of the box of Then is the mile with you I tarry. Then is the hour with you I would spend. I thought that you would be mine forever. But love I found has a cruel end. Many is the night, love as you lay sleeping, dreaming of some sweet repose, while I, a young girl, left broken hearted, listening to the wind that blows. Oh. Oh.
to never let me cross your mind. If you think I'm proved unworthy, go and leave me, I don't mind. The genteel craft of lace making was placed in more delicate hands. The intricate spidery patterns were woven by skillful and devoted fingers to create an art form that was once a familiar sight in many homes and could be again with the help of people like Breed Smith. Inish McSaint lace was very similar to Venetian lace. It was a fine raised needlepoint. The design was traced out on green cloth, done with a running stitch and then the delicate stitches were filled in with a very fine flax thread, about 200 or 300 thread thickness, something like the hair of the head. When the entire piece of lace was done, the running stitches were cut at the back and the lace was lifted from the green cloth. This is why locally it was never called Inish McSaint lace, it was called the green work. In 1865, the Reverend George Tottenham was rector of the parish of Inish McSaint. And he married a Miss McLean, a rector's daughter from Tynan in County Armagh. Her family were greatly involved in the lace school in Tynan. At that particular time, here locally, there was great poverty. And the rector felt if he could have some sort of employment for the women of the district, it might help to alleviate some suffering. So he asked his two sisters-in-law if they could set up a lace-making production here. And earlier they had visited Italy and brought back some Venetian lace, which they unpicked. And by adding cording and different stitches, they formed a new lace. And what better name could they have for the lace than take it from the parish of Inish McSaint and the island of Inish McSaint. These ladies taught lace making to the local women in the rectory gatehouse and they met twice a week. When the numbers increased they got larger premises at the old dispensary in Derry <coughs> At this stage, the Miss McLean sought the help of professional teachers. The first was a Mrs. Follis. The second was Miss Ellen Hazard. Miss Hazard owned her own farm overlooking Loch Erne, now owned by her nephew, Mr. Jason Hazard, who still has a piece of lace in his possession. The lace had royal connections. Queen Victoria received some Inish McSaint lace. Queen Alexandra in 1902 and Queen Mary in 1911 had some of the lace included in their coronation robes. Oh, 
Tarragonli's greatest cultured asset is its musical heritage. 
which has been handed down through generations by talented and caring musicians who have generously shared their time and artistic abilities with enthusiastic students. The first time I got an interest in accordion was there, there was an accordion band in the here. And it was there I developed the interest in the accordion. I used to go to band practices with my father and that. He was the leader of the band here in Manea. And it was from there that I developed the interest in the accordion. I think Jerry Gunn is just a kind of a, a scene by, by people in the north that's kind of out in a limb, like, you know. But when they come down from Belfast and that, they can't believe the crack, you know. The, I think it's really established itself, you know, this last couple of years. Uh, there's an awful lot of people has even rang me there last night from Scotland, wanting literature about the festival and that, like, you know, they say they travel all over England, Scotland and Ireland, you know, to festivals. And the first thing they say about the Derry Gunley Festival is a very homely festival, you know, that they're given a very, the musicians are treated very well. And it's, it's a great bearing on the festival itself, you know. The musicians who come to, to the festival, do they come from, from Ireland or...? No, no, from? no, there's there's one from America and everywhere. You know, that, that I have met there last year and the year before, like, you know. And it's great, it's great meeting ground for new musicians and new tunes and music and that, like, you know. The mill owner called for order, 
His voice was very low. Oh, sorrow, there's little far in the flax, and there's nothing far in the toe. And you gotta pack his scutcher too. That doesn't give a rap. So long as they get steaming up at any poor man's scrap. Me father was a vineyard mold, a felon of the land, and he spent the most of thirty years in Corsp and Damon land. He glowered at them defiantly, till the chairman gave a roar, get out of this year with old man and don't come back more. <laughs> Well, since unto my pleading, you have shown such malaise, you can take the blame and pension <laughs> from gun shiver. Open on the last day, we'll all get off the handy. Here's a hell to ask when, if Chamberlain would now come up with his lamp from his all three acres and a cow. And it is also thanks to previous generations that the history and events of earlier times have been preserved for posterity in song and story. Fair the mother unto the daughter, look before you be. If you sow the seed upon her, you may swim before you sleep. I think your snow is for the wind, my dove and I agree. There's no down, he's in the spring, he's wearing this long for me. He jingle lots of speed, the cavalry will be a hero now for cutting down the street. Now I think you're still like a brave lad, it's a fact no one can deny. He'll find a smile more sweetly and wink as he goes by. And before this year is ended, who would you like to bet with me? McCaffrey will bless the moonlight night he cut down the Christmas tree. <laughs> and variations of style and sound are actively encouraged. These marching musicians have helped to brighten many events with their presence.
A Christmas of old was never complete until the arrival of the mummers on the street. How this straw costume performing art form originated is lost in the midst of time. And should one ask, the answer will always conclude with an assertive, the mummers shall have always been here. Here comes I, Captain Mummer and all me men. Room, room, gallant boys, give us room to rhyme. <laughs> Here comes I like Captain, the Captain of this noble crew. I fought round this town in 1922. I was as brave a soldier as ever faced the field. To a foreign enemy and away yet again. For singers and dancers, we have them galore. The best that ever stood upon your floor. We have them from England, we have them from France. Just stand on side and give them a chance. One name that holds a permanent place in the hearts and minds of the people of Darragonley is that of Eddie Duffy, a gifted musician who in his lifetime collected, played and shared his love for traditional music and it was his contagious enthusiasm and dedication that has helped to mould many of today's leading musicians. The Darragonley Set Dancing Club commemorates Eddie Duffy's contribution to traditional music in the village and beyond with the Eddie Duffy Memorial Traditional Music Festival held during the month of October each year. An occasion like this doesn't just happen, it takes months of meticulous planning by an industrious committee to ensure the success of this event. Families and friends from home and abroad are reunited every year for this festive occasion with a hearty Cade Mila Fulcher. Darragonley, a village with pride in its past and hope for its future. <laughs>